the thing is, is that in life, it's hard to have faith when things seem so, like, hopeless or not hopeless. I mean, I don't feel like things are hopeless. I really got to get my tree inside. I don't really feel like things are hopeless. I just feel like things are hard right now. Things are really hard right now. And I can't see a solution. And so what I've been doing, and I know this, like, I'm not, a, I'm really not a religiously freak person. And I don't, like, that's for me. Like, I don't tell other people how to live their life or what to believe in or what their religion is. I, I you know, I believe everybody has the right to their own faith and religion and every there's truth in them all. And I don't feel like one is above the other. I feel whatever is right for one person is, is if that's true for them, that's great. Um, but, oh, what was I saying now? Oh, yeah. I can't see a solution, so I've just been praying about it. And, uh, I've been trying to figure it out. But sometimes when you try too hard to figure something out, you get more, more tangled than if you just, like, relax. And this goes back to the whole thing I was talking about, um, surrendering and not knowing things and re like relaxing back into the flow of life it's very hard for me to do and I've come to understand recently that my worry which is like I never used to worry about things train whistle I never used to worry about things uh really until maybe I don't know. I don't know when this worry part just like slowly creeped in somehow. I don't know. Like sometimes I, I mean, I'm, I don't worry a lot about a lot of things. Um, but sometimes I really do worry a lot <laughs> about certain things and relaxing into the flow of life. And just case of raw, raw, and and just like okay, I'm just gonna float along here. There's something to be said for that, and I've realized recently that worry is also a form of control. Think about it. Just think about it for a second. Worry is like what happens when when you worry is what happens when you can't control the outcomes. Or you don't know the outcomes of things or the or not even the outcomes it's not just outcomes it's just like the next minute in time the next day in time the next week in time worry is like is is like that fucking gnat that just like flies in your face you know, and you're like, fuck, get the fuck out of here. And just, you know, comes back. And there is it's just like, it is like this form of um, control. And constantly worrying, and this is like, I read this, like worrying is like praying for the things you don't want. It, because you're putting, it's totally true, because you're putting energy... Worrying is like praying for the things you don't want because you're putting your your mind now is using energy to to think about things that you don't want to happen or things that could happen in the in the realm of 75 million kabillion endless possibilities that are that are there in every second like just the second that just passes like possibilities for every single thing and in this second pos all the possibilities are reset every single thing and in the next second and now the, everything is possible exactly at the same time boom 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 down the line worry is like con trying to control 50 million endless loop infinity possibilities how can one human mind think that it can control 
How can one human mind, okay, think it can control and or be prepared for, most importantly, be prepared for an infinity loop of possibilities? It's just not possible. It's just not possible. But you know what? If we stopped worrying, if all, like, I mean, as a collective, if we all stopped worrying about what could happen and, and store that energy that we would spend on worrying to actually deal with things as they come, then we would have more energy to, to u utilize when there is something that we have to deal with that we would rather not deal with. And in fact, if we, if we didn't use that energy worrying, we could use that energy, uh, not only that, it frees up space for us to just go about our lives and our daily lives doing like they, uh, doing things that we got to do, you know, or doing things that we enjoy or just being in the moment of life. And that's what I mean. Like worry can be a control. This is like something that I've been, that's been rattling around. This is a can I've been kicking in my mind now for, um, a couple of months, maybe, you know, maybe a little longer. I have no sense of time anymore. When I say, like, a couple of months, it could be, like, a year. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like, a couple of days. Feels like, you know, a lifetime. Anyways, or less, depending. Uh, you know... Um, yeah, worry is like trying to control. It's a, it's a, and not only that, it is. okay, so the other thing that, uh, I just deleted six snaps, but what I want to say is the other thing that came to my attention recently was worry and worrying about people that we care about. Now, my hair is a mess. But when we worry about people that we care about, that also is is a form of like control because and okay, look, um, this is like what my mother she's like, oh, you know, all mothers worry about their children, and I don't know, like, I guess is it something about like we worry about like the people we care about, and and does that in our minds make us like. Uh, is that like it's like an ego feed it's like feeding our ego or something it kind of feels like that i don't i don't think that we should worry about each other you know if, and i don't know if this is even i may change my mind on this as I, it evolves to me that's the thing about me my thoughts I'm very mercurial and my thoughts constantly evolve. My ideas constantly evolve and what they were yesterday may not be what they are today. They may have blossomed out into something totally different. But for right now, what I'm saying is, is that worrying about somebody else is kind of like defeatist. And it's, um, almost like pity in a way where you don't, think that the person, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You know, you can't, a, a human mom, a human being, it's like, I'm not going to say this right. I'm not going to say it right. Sometimes I wish I was more, um, there is a bigger picture here in the divine orchestration of life. And Worry is just putting a finger in the spoke of the wheel. Even when you're worrying about somebody else. That worry may not affect them, but it sure as fuck is affecting you. And it may even uh, affect the way that you're relating to that person. And, uh, you know, it's like, look, like the divine, God, universe, however you want to call it. Um, Mother Earth, Father Sky, takes care of everything. The birds are provided for, you, butterflies hatch and they, and they fly thousands of miles. Train whistle.
If all of those things are provided for in nature, then so too are we provided for and taken care of in every moment. So there's no need for any human being to worry about another human being because a power higher than you has got it covered. And us in our in our ego monkey mind uh okay. So us in our ego monkey minds think that or worry it's just like adding the wrong energy into a situation or you know into the matrix. There need like there's a shift and we all want to be there for each other. You know what I mean? Especially now because tragic things have happened and the thing is is that being there for somebody and loving somebody and caring for someone is a totally different space than worry. You know? And worry kind of goes hand in hand with codependency. It's a totally different way to relate. And and that codependent, like, I have to do this or this, you know, this person isn't, is going to make it or I have to be there because how else will they survive? Or I have to do this because if I don't do this, they may, you know, this is like, worry is, is, uh, is a form of control. And I recently went through a situation where uh, that became clearly obvious to me. And that's one, you know, worry for others. And I, um, it's Wednesday. I'm giving out Wednesday wisdom. That's what I do on Wednesdays now. <laughs> I don't even know if this is wisdom. This is just ramblings from like this. kooky lady uh what i'm saying is like why worry when you know you can't be prepared for any of the shit that you're worrying about worrying is not preparing yourself for fucking things that could go wrong worry is just like you useless you might as well just like burn your energy it's just like burning money you might as well just like if, if your energy's money, then, like, worry is, like, taking a stack of $100 bills and just, like, throwing it into the bonfire and be like, oh, yeah. Seriously. It does nothing. It doesn't get you closer to a solution. It doesn't get you closer to a solution. It doesn't help you figure things out. It doesn't prepare you for anything. All it does is this spinning. It's like, it's like, it's like an, uh, um, an exercise bike. It just goes in place. You're just spinning your gears in place. You're not even fucking getting anywhere. You might as well just like not worry and then like go down the road. And like if there happens to be a pothole, then you just deal with it then and you just swerve around it. And like if a tree falls, then, you know, you stop short and you fucking detour the other way. Like that's how I, I don't know. Letting go of worry is also a form of relinquishing control and surrendering to, to the flow of life. This is what I have come to learn. And every day I try to remind myself of this in, in situations. But even last week I was, you know, I was worried. You worry about people you care about because you don't want anything bad to happen to them. But you're not even doing that is not like you're not affecting the universe by like your worry. <laughs> I mean, you're not, there's a, like higher things at, at, at play here. There's a million different things going on that us humans just don't have, you know, we're not, we don't have the bigger picture and everything needs to happen. Everything happens for a reason and everybody is on their own path and they need to go through things. So, so for lessons that their, their soul needs to learn and you can't save somebody from themselves you can't, you, you may think that you know better for somebody, but in fact, you don't. You don't know better for anybody, and the only person that you could know better for is even your, is yourself, and even then, we don't know what's better for ourselves sometimes. And 
There, nobody can tell you what's better for you. It goes both ways. And if you think about like all the circumstances in your life and all the people that have played a part in, in the story and tapestry of your life and every interaction that you've had, I mean, every person that you've ever known, that you've ever cared about, that you've ever been acquaintance of, even in business, like in life, everywhere, every person, even the person at the gas station who's, you know, you, you, you said, have a nice day. I mean, you don't know. I mean, that whole network and tapestry, every little interaction has, has, has been a gift. There's been a lesson in every single little thing and every little thing that you've been through. Every little part of your life needed to be that way for you to learn a lesson. So, so even then, like, the people in our lives that that everything is there for a reason even the people that like you know who aren't good to us especially those those the people that hurt us are our teachers that pain is a teacher that all of these things that we go through in life have brought us and made us not made us who we are but they have gifted us with a, a, a little more of an awareness than we had before that circumstance. So you can't, there's no way for any person to know what's best for another person. You don't know what's best. God, universe, eagle eye has the whole story already mapped out. All we need to do is just fucking be. That's, that's the thing here. And, and for me, I'm realizing, and I do it way more often than I used to, where I say in, where I say in prayer, and again, I'm not a religious person, but I'm not even going to defend that. Like when I pray, I'm like, God, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't even know like what's good for me. <laughs> like, I know what I deserve. I know my value and my worth, but I would rather have like my higher power guide me along the the road then for me and and there I mean free will is whatever you know is good but I'm not going to be a stubborn ass about it if I'm lost in the middle of nowhere I'm going to ask for directions I'm not going to just sit there and be like oh I'll figure it out and get like you know 10 miles deep deeper into the into the woods that I don't know how to get the fuck out of I now surrender to my higher power and Instead of worrying about another person, I pray for them. And there's a difference. And, and you to show kindness and love and compassion toward, uh, love, kindness and compassion towards others is different than worrying. And that like that was just like in the past few days. I just had this whole big realization, these aha moments where I'm like, wait a minute, this is ego. <laughs> And the more that I recognize my ego in certain things, the more I realize, holy fuck, I really don't, I just don't fucking know anything. I like, I don't. Okay? I am a human being. I mean, a spiritual person. I am a soul in this vessel, you know, this crude matter, you know, uh, that's encompassing my soul at the moment. But it comes along with this you know, being in this density of earth comes along with a fucking ego. And that's, an ego is just like this spoiled little brat who thinks it knows, that's what, you know, ego is like the spoiled little brat that thinks it knows everything, can figure everything out on its own. And and it's just not the case. And, and you know, I, I it's just... <clears throat> In the past two weeks, I had a come, uh, like a come to Jesus moment <laughs> with myself, like a real come to Jesus moment, like a real, like real, and it's almost like, okay, if you could, if you could, <laughs> if you have, if you could learn, if you could be, if you could, and this is just, you know, because look, if you could learn from Yoda, if you could, if Yoda could, was a real thing, okay? And you could be um, mentored and taught like Luke Skywalker by Yoda. Would you do that or would you just sit there and try to figure shit out for yourself? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't.
you would be like, yes, sign me up. And that's what I'm saying. Listen, Star Wars is like, I, there are so many, like, really, there are so many, Star Wars is just like the perfect movie, honestly. <laughs> so many life lessons in that movie, even if they were non-intentional. There is a Yoda on my mantle. Yoda is my fucking guru. Seriously. That whole, and this is what I'm talking about, you know, like when Luke Skywalker um, goes to um, Dagobah and and he's, uh, wait, not, is it? Or the, in the swamp, and when he's in the swamp with Yoda, and you could see that, like his ego is preventing him from pulling that ship up out of the swamp, right? He doesn't believe it can be done. How could he possibly do that? It's too big. It's too heavy. It's impossible. That's like the ego. I can't do it. It's a waste of time. Like all of these things. And then like Yoda, who's like yay big. It's just like surrenders to the higher to the higher power of the force. And, and nothing is impossible. The only thing that's stopping you is your mind. <clears throat> it's like relinquishing the monkey mind, worry, the, the ego, the, everything about it, the control, and surrendering to the higher power. So you can get things... Well, so you can get things done, but not only like that. Like, you can achieve things that, that your mind is too crude to monkey mind to even believe in it's surrendering to a higher power and um and it's like uh there's just like so so many like wisdom things in star wars i'm just like fear is the path to the dark side it's true <laughs> And, and that's ego. I'm not saying like ego's the dark side, but I mean, <clears throat> that attachment, the attachment to all of that worry and fear, it's defeatist. And we can't eliminate the ego. It's part of who we are. It's part of our makeup, but we don't have to let it control our... There's a, there's a difference between, uh, you know, Look, believing in yourself, having a, that healthy balance between ego and soul, ego and heart, ego and, fe you know, the mind and the f and feeling, the heart and mind and the balance between the two, the, the right, the right hemisphere of the brain and the left hemisphere of the brain, the alpha and the omega, the yin and the yang and the balance between the two. So, so, so important. We're not, can, you can't, I don't believe in any spiritual teaching that tells you to eliminate the ego. We're not, we're in, in this density of, of life. I mean, ego is, it's part of who we are here. Maybe when, when we go off to the next dimension, ego doesn't exist. But for right now, it kind of does. And we're not going to be able to eliminate it completely because it's part of who we are. It's integrating, okay? It's like integrating it. And creating a balance so your ego is not running your life for you. Your heart is. Your soul is. You're coming from a place of not think of feeling. That's what this new this new paradigm that we're ushering in in this world and reality is. It's not about killing the ego. There is a you know the ego death and stuff, but that's not ego death. Doesn't mean that the ego is dying. It's just like the control of the ego is the 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 the. the the thing that you have set up that you believe that you are is like not there. It's doesn't, it's not, it's an illusion. And, and we're stepping through the veil and becoming more of who we are. And that's a feeling space that's inside. And, um, inside the heart and, uh, figure it's, it's a, it's a surrendering to, to this, you know, the soul. To your higher power and the you know the ego's there 
And, and when you need it, it's there, but it doesn't like, it's not in the driver's seat. In fact, the ego, like, it's like moving the ego to the back seat and be like, just put your seatbelt on. I, I got this now. And, and you're in, and you're in the, and your higher power is driving the vehicle and you're in the front seat, your soul's in the front seat. And the ego is just like back there in the car seat where it belongs. Okay, listen, this is like 740 snaps. Um, okay. Happy Wednesday. Let's make this a really great Wednesday. In fact, let's make this a really great week, okay? Have a great Wednesday. Have a great week. Enjoy your week. Enjoy your life. Enjoy every moment. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm even trying to enjoy the f my full bloated face. It is what it is. I am who I am. Train whistle. Uh, you know, what's meant for you is never going to pass you by because everything's orchestrated. And, and for me, that's a big thing, too. It's like, I don't need to, to try so hard. It's allowing things to come and, and, and grow in their own natural space. Anyway, all right. Happy Wednesday. Toodaloo.